It is Tuesday. It is time for our e-blast. So uh, i got some things I want to talk to you about this week. In fact, over the next several weeks, I want to be talking to you about uh, Thanksgiving. I mean, this is, we're in November now. We, it's the time of year we celebrate Thanksgiving. We're past that creepy holiday called Halloween. Uh, you know I'm not a big fan, but we are coming to a time, to a season, which I am really a big fan of, and that is Thanksgiving season. And it's not because we sit around and eat too much food, and man, do I love pecan pie. But it is it is a time we should really be celebrating and thanking God and worshiping God for all that he's done for us. It'll be really a, a season of reflection. So let's start now. The next few Tuesdays, I'll talk about this and different aspects of Thanksgiving. I believe it was in 1863 that Abraham Lincoln set aside the national national holiday that we observe the last Thursday of every November, and we call it Thanksgiving Day. For some, it's a day of football. It's a day of food. But my goodness, let's let's come back to the traditional idea of what it was established for, and that's to give Thanksgiving. Let me, let me share with you a powerful scripture about Thanksgiving that most people don't uh, wouldn't go to when you come to thinking about Thanksgiving. This is found in Romans chapter 1, by the way. And listen to what it says in Romans chapter 1. Let me get my good eyes on for a second. And chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. God's just saying, hey, there's no reason to excuse you uh, uh, and under the sun for you to be an atheist. God's made it very clear. He goes on, how do you do it? For the creation of the world, his, in, uh, his invisible attributes, his eternal powers, divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. In other words, so much design, there must be a designer. There, you've got to realize this isn't some explosion. This came from the hand of a, of a creator. And he goes on to say, here's, what it, here's the verse about Thanksgiving. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Man, think about that. Two things can I say. They did not honor God as God. And they did not give thanks. In other words, God revealed himself. God showed him that all this bounty comes from his hand, but yet they did not glorify God, and they did not honor God. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, put it in a nutshell, they didn't worship God. They just didn't worship God. Let me ask you this question. How many of you, when you think of the word worship, put in that term thanksgiving? I mean, a lot of people, uh, what's worship? Well, it's it's singing songs, it's uh, it's raising hands, it's expressing our love, it's praise, it's joy. But what he's saying here, you know, if you really want to worship God as God and honor God as God, then he says you would be giving thanks, you know, and thanksgiving. Uh, I believe gratitude is an extremely important part of genuine worship. Uh, I mean, and sometimes it's the most left out part. It just doesn't seem to be an expression of worship. But gratitude according to what's written by the apostle here, God breathed scripture of Romans chapter one, gratitude is an, our, our, it becomes an expression of the revelation that God is God, that he created all things and everything I have and everything I enjoy comes from God. And if I have that revelation and know that this is for, because of God, then there should be humility. There, there should be, there should be a, a conviction in my heart to say, if God is God, I am not, all I have comes from God. I should recognize him as a as the God above all things and be thankful for him for all that he does do for me in my life. I mean, uh, this has and hasn't got a thing to do with how I feel today, with what my emotions might dictate. This has to do with affections, and that's different from affections or emotions. Affections has to do with the. Uh, a commitment. It has to do with a, a conviction. I really do believe that God is God. Therefore, out of that, not based on my circumstances, not based on what I'm emotionally going through, based on this truth that God is God, uh, that every good and perfect gift comes from Him, there should be this attitude of, of honoring Him, a personal attitude of humility, and personally, uh, from my mouth, all right, and f flowing from my heart, comes a thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are worthy. You're God. There's none above you. I am not God. You are God. And all of this comes from you. So uh, if you want to know what a synonym for affection would be, it would be devotedness and devotion. So out of this revelation that God is God comes this, this, this heart of devotedness. 
and out of the heart that is devoted to the Lord comes worship and comes adoration. Uh, David said several places in Psalms and talked about offering the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. In the New Testament, it talks about offering the calves of our lips, the sacrifice. What's that mean? That It means that I honor God and give him praise and I give him, uh, I thank him. Uh, there's this attitude of continual worship and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this. Thank, count my many blessings. Just It's a continual uh, it's a continual sacrifice of praise. And it is a sacrifice because we don't feel like it many times. And sometimes we're not feeling grateful. We really have a, an ungratefulness in our spirit. So we come back to the place to recognize God is God. I pray that this, that this holiday season will be just like that for you. And you'll enjoy more than ever, not just family and friends, but you'll enjoy really thanks, praising and, and giving thanks to God. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in, in the next coming uh, few weeks. So hey, don't forget that this Wednesday night we start our individual men's and women's Bible studies on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss that. Some great Bible studies are going on at every campus, so get there, get on time. Uh, I know some of you think, well, Wednesday night is the World Series this week. Hey, uh, they won't even be in the third inning by the time church is over, so hey, go to church. Enjoy the Bible study. It's just an hour. It'll bless your life. It'll keep your heart in, in tune with the Lord and keep you with an attitude of humility and giving thanks to God. So let's thank the Lord today. Just take some time, even in a personal time with your driving, walking, whatever, and take some time to really thank the Lord for all he's done. I love you. We're going to have a great service this week. We're doing communion in church this week. So come be a part of what the Lord's doing. And you know our communion services at Believers Fellowships are always phenomenal. Come be a part of it. God bless you.